Yeah, I'm going to tell this RV story. Do you Have you heard the story of the RV that I drove, uh, Wagger? I don't think so. It may not matter. So um, basically, uh, <clears throat> so at some point, kind of early into quarantine, um, in my neighborhood, uh, and you probably see this in, in all kinds of neighborhoods, but um, uh, I'm trying to turn off my, uh, put my do not disturb. Um, uh, there were, uh, obviously the, the homeless problem in Los Angeles. Oh, go ahead. Well, Carl. surprise drop in. Carl Tart is here. And Carl, I uh, know, knows this story. Yes. But Keep please going. continue the story. Keep going. Hey, Carl. Oh yeah. So hey. someone asked for the RV story. You know this one, Carl. The, the, uh, there's a homeless, uh, housing crisis in, uh, Los Angeles. And, um, a lot of people will live in RVs and they'll kind of park their RV somewhere on the street and that's where they live. So across the street from me, a man parked his RV and was living there for a little while. Um, and I hadn't really interacted with him, but one day we saw that he had had a friend come with a truck and hook their truck up to the RV and was trying to pull it out to move it. And I guess like they need to move it every so often because like otherwise it'll get towed away by the city or something if you're in any given neighborhood for too long. So as he was trying to move it uh, with his friend, they like pulled the front bumper off and it just like went flying into the street. And so then they were like fucked and he just pushed it back into the curb and left it there for another few days. Then maybe a week later, I'm outside on the porch. I'm hanging out with my kid. And all of a sudden I hear someone calling me like, hey, hey, I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. And I was like, what is it? What can I do? And the guy who owned the RV was standing there and he had managed to like reattach the bumper and attach a truck, but he didn't have his friend with him anymore. And he said, I'm going to move my RV. I don't want to be in this neighborhood anymore. And I said, okay. And he said, I need you to drive the RV. Oh, my. Drive the RV. So I, oh, man. So I ran inside to my wife and she was like, what's going on? I was like, well, the guy who lives outside needs me to drive his RV. <laughs> and she went, well, are you going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I took as like a challenge of like, yeah, I guess so. And I like ran in and I got a mask and I got some gloves and I ran and I jumped into uh, his RV and he jumped into the truck and he started driving and I could barely fit in. Like it was so loaded with like debris and everything. Like I'm like squeezed into the RV. Like I could barely get my ass onto the seat and I pull the door closed. I briefly have a moment of like, I wonder if this door will ever open again or if, like I'm just stuck in here forever. Um, he starts <laughs> driving down the street and I'm behind him. And as we're like going, I'm just like very aware. Of, I just feel extremely vulnerable because I'm like, this guy can take me wherever he wants. <laughs> He's driving. He gets up to the stop side of the other block. He stops. I slam on the brakes. They do nothing. I crash into his truck. <laughs> like, oh my God. Jesus. Like, pretty fast. I'm like just jolted, like I shake back and forth. And I immediately am like, oh no, this guy's going to be mad at me. Like, I just crashed into his truck. He has no reaction. That's when I realized, no, 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 he's not mad. This was the plan. I'm going to be crashing oh, into him wow. every time we stop for however long we drive. So then oh he, my like, God. he opens shit. it up and just like starts going and we drive down another like three blocks, four blocks. He's sort of rolling through and running stop signs, which on the one hand is dangerous because now like my ass is just left in the intersection as he rolls through a stop sign without looking. But also I don't want him to stop at the stop signs because that means I'm going to collide with him every time. <laughs> man <laughs> so we get up to like third street or whatever he stops i i smash into him again i'm leaning out the window and like screaming at him because i also have to steer it like even though it has no brakes like every time we make a turn i have to cut the wheel as hard as i can there's obviously not power steering my arms are exhausted just from like gripping the wheel and i'm like how far are we going how far are we going because we're stopped i'm like maybe i just jump out and leave i don't want to but i'm scared He's like, he's like, we're going to go one more block. We're going to go one more block. He starts driving. We drive like six more blocks. We're going <laughs> fast now. <laughs> he's, he turns out on the sink, which is like a main road, like a four lane road. Everyone's fucking beeping at him. And I'm just like, I'm now in full blown panic mode. But he starts pointing at an open spot and be like, we're going there. We're going there. And I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> he, 
he pulls through a red light and pulls a U-turn, which like with this truck and RV is insane because you're like spinning way out. Everyone's like stopping and laying on the horn. He gets turned around. I cut the wheel all the way around. We get up, we pull up in front of the spot. And I sort of go like, wait, how do we do this? Then he answers the question by ramming into me as hard as he can. <laughs> wow. like, cut the wheel, cut the wheel to push the fucking trailer like back into the spot. Then he like jumps out and unhitches. And I was like, are we done? He's like, no, he jumps back in the car. Also, as he gets back in the car, he's pounding on the door as hard as he can. And I was like, oh no, he's really mad at me about something now. Nope, the door stopped working. So he like jumps up and lowers himself in through the window, does another U-turn, almost hits like four people, rams into me from the back. And I have to like cut the thing back the other way so we can like slide in. And then we're in the parking spot. Uh, he jumps out and just comes up and is like, hey, thanks, man. Do you need a ride back? <laughs> wow. Like, and I was like, no, my wife is coming to pick me up because Grace had called me at one point and been like, what's going on? Like, from her perspective, she just said, I see you like hunched up like over the wheel. I see you crash into him. And she's like, and Jesus Christ. This, is, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Jesus. She's like, then as you disappear around the corner, I think, oh no, I'm never going to see him again. <laughs> like, so she called me and I was like, well, we found a spot. So um, he just has to ram me a couple more times <laughs> and then we'll be parked. Um, wow. And that area, that area That's is not funny. good for that. That area is not good for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where, wow. where Sean Clemens lives, down the street from the Kardashians in Calabasas, that area is not <laughs> good for that. Um, wow, I love that's that fucking story. insane! Incredible it was really anecdote. crazy. Hayes said it. It felt like Mad Max when he, <laughs> he heard the story. Uh, a ripping good yarn. Well, 